Today we're going to read 45 a month, which is a short story in Malgudi days written by A.K. Narayanan, who is a sh- who is a famous Indian writer. So, let's go. 45 a month. Shanta could not stay in her class any longer. She had done clay modeling, music, drill, a bit of alphabets and numbers, and now she and now she was cutting coloured paper. She would have to cut till the bell rang and the teacher said, Now you may all go home or put away your scissors and take up your alphabets. Shanta was impatient to know the time. She asked her friend sitting next to her, Is it five now? Maybe she, maybe she replied. Or is it six? I don't think so, her friend replied, because night comes at six. Do you think it's five? Yes. Oh, I must go. My father will be back at home now. He has asked me to be ready at five. He is taking me to the cinema this evening. I must go home. She threw down her scissors and ran up to the teacher. Madam, I must go home. Why, Shantabai? Because it is five o'clock now. Who told it you it was five? Kamala, it's not five now. It is. Do you see the clock there? Tell me what the time is. I taught you to read the clock the other day. Shanta stood gazing at the clock in the hall, counting with figures laboriously and declared, It's nine o'clock. The teacher called the other girls and said, Who will tell me the time from the clock? Several several of them equo- occurred with Shanta and said it was nine o'clock, till the teacher said, You're only seeing the long can. See the short one. Where is it? Two and a half. So what's the time? Two and a half. It's 2.45 understand now you may all go to your sheet seats shanta re- returned to the teacher in about 10 minutes and asked is it five madam because i have to be ready at five otherwise my father will be very angry with me he asked me to return home early at what time now the teacher gave her permission to leave and shanta picked up her books and dashed out of the class with a cry of joy she ran home, threw her books on the floor and shouted, Mother! Mother! And Mother came ru- running from the next house where she had gone to chat with her friends. Mother asked, Why are you back so early? Has Father come home? Shanda asked. She would not take her coffee or tiffin but ins- insisted on being dressed first. She opened the trunk and insisted on wearing the thinnest frocks and knickers while her mother wanted to dress her in a long skirt and a thick coat for the evening. Shanta picked out a gorgeous ribbon ribbon from a cardboard soapbox in which she kept her pencils, ribbons and chalk bits. There was a heated argument between mother and daughter over the dress and finally mother had to give in. Shanta put on her favourite pink frock, braided her hair and flaunted a green ribbon on her pigtail. She powdered her face and pressed a vermilion mark on her fa- forehead. She said, Now father will say what a nice girl I am because I am ready. W- aren't you also coming, mother? Not today. Shanta stood at the little gate looking down the street. Mother said, Father will come only after five. Don't you stand in the dark in the sun? It's only four o'clock. The sun was disappearing behind the house at the opposite row and Shanta knew that presently it would be dark. She ran in to her mother and asked, Why hasn't father come home yet, mother? How can I know? Perhaps he's held up in the office. Shanta made a very wry face. I don't like these people in the office. They're bad people. She went to, back to the gate and stood looking out. Her mother shouted from inside, Come in, Shanta, it's getting dark. Don't stand there. But Shanta would not go in. She stood at the gate and a wild idea came into her head. Why should she, shouldn't she not go to the office and call out father and then go to the cinema? She wondered where his office might be. She had no notion. She had seen her father take return at the end of the street every day. If one went there, Perhaps one went automatically to father's office. She threw a glance about to see if mother was anywhere and moved down the street. It was twilight. Everyone going 
about looked gigantic. Walls of houses appeared very high and cycles and carriages looked as though they would bear down on her. She walked on the very edge of the road. Soon the lamps were twinkling and the passers-by looked like shadows. She had taken two turns and did not know where she was. She sat down on the edge of the road, biting her nails. She wondered how she was to reach home. A servant employed in the next house was passing along and she picked herself up and stood before him. Oh, what are you doing here all alone? he asked. She replied, I don't know, I came here. Will you take me to your our house? She followed him and was soon back in her house. Venkant Rao, Shanta's father, was about to start for his office that morning when Jutka passed along the street, distributing cinema handbills. Shanta dashed to the street and picked up a handbill. She held it up and asked, if, asked, Father, will you take me to the cinema today? He felt unhappy at the question. Here was the child growing up without any of the animites and the simple pleasures of our life. He had hardly taken her twice to the cinema. He had no time for the child. While ch children of her age in other houses had all the dolls, dresses and outings that they wanted, this child was growing up all alone and like a barbarian, much or less. He felt furious with his office. For 40 rupees a month, they seemed to have purchased him outright. He reapproached himself for ne neglecting his wife and child. Even a wife could have her own circle of friends and so on. She was, after all, a grown-up. But what about the child? What a drab, colourless existence was hers. Every day they kept him in the office till seven or eight in the evening, and when he came home, the child was asleep. Even on Sundays they wanted him at the office. Why did they think? He had no personal life, a life of his own. They gave him hardly any time to take the child to the park or the pictures. He was going to show them that they weren't to toy with him. Yes, he was prepared even to quarrel with his manager if necessary. He said with resolve, I will take you to the cinema this evening. Be ready at five. Really? Mother, Shanta shouted. Mother came out of the kitchen. Father is taking me to the cinema in the evening. Shanta's mother smiled cynically. Don't make false promises to your child. Then Katroa glared at her. Don't talk nonsense. You think you're the only person who keeps promises. He told Shanta, be ready at five and I will come to take you positively to the cinema. If you are not ready, I will be very angry with you. He walked to his office, full of resolve, and he would do his normal work and get out at five. If they started any old tricks of theirs, he was going to tell the boss. Here's my resignation. My child's happiness is more important to me than these horrible papers of yours. All day, the usual stream of papers flowed onto his table and off it. He scrutinized, signed and drafted. He was corrected, admonished and insulted. He had a break of only five minutes in the afternoon for his coffee. When the office clock struck five and the other clerks were leaving, he went up to the manager and said, May I go, sir? The manager looked up from his paper. You? I was unthinkable that the cash accountant section should be closing at five. How can you go? I've had some urgent private business, sir, he said, smothering the lines he had been rehearsing since the morning. He was my resignation. He visualised Shanta standing at the door, dressed, palpating with eagerness. There shouldn't be anything more urgent than office work. Go back to your seat. You know how many hours I work? asked the manager. The manager came into the office three hours before opening time and stayed nearly three hours after closing. Even on Sundays, the clerks commented on among themselves. His wife must be whipping him whenever he is seen at home. Oh, that is why the old owl seems so fond of his office. Do you trace the source of light of, the, of that 10-8 difference? asked the manager. I shall have to examine 200 vultures and I thought we might
do it tomorrow. No, no, this won't do. You must rectify it immediately. Ven Venkat Roa mumbled, yes, sir, and slunk back to his seat. The clock showed 5.30. Now it meant two hours of execrating search among vultures. All the rest of the office was gone. Only he and another clerk in his section were working. And, of course, the manager was there. Venkat Roa was furious. His mind was made up. He wasn't a slave who had sold himself for 40 rupees outright. He could make that money easily, and if he couldn't, it would be more honourable to die of starvation. He took a sheet of paper and wrote, Here with my resignation, if you people think you have bought my body and soul for 40 rupees, you are mistaken. I think it would be a far better of me and my family to die of starvation then slave for this pretty 40 rupees and you which have kept me for years and years i suppose you have not the slightest notion of you are giving increment you give yourselves heavy slices frequently and i don't see why you shouldn't think of us occasionally in any case it doesn't interest me since this is my resignation if me and my family perish of starvation May our ghost come and haunt you for all your life. He folded the letter, put it in an envelope, sealed the flap, addressed it to the manager. He left his seat and stood before the manager. The manager mechanically left, received the letter and put it on his pad. Mankat Roa, said the manager, I'm sure you will be glad to hear this news. Our officer discussed the question of increments today. I've recommended you for an increment of five rupees. Orders are not yet passed, so keep this to yourself at the present. Venkat Roa put out his hand, snatched for the envelope from the pad, and hastily slipped it in his pocket. What is the letter? I've applied you for a little casual leave, sir, but I think you can't get a leave for at least a fortnight to come. Yes, sir, I realise that. That is why I am withdrawing my application, sir. Very well. Have you traced that mistake? I am scrutinising the voucher, sir. I will find it about within an hour. It was nine o'clock when he went home. Shanta was already asleep, her mother said. She wouldn't even change her frock, thinking that any moment you, you might be coming and, and taking her out. She hardly ate any food and wouldn't lie down for fear of crumpling her dress. Then Cad Roa's heart bled when he saw his child sleeping in a pink frock, hair combed and face powdered, dressed and ready to be taken out. Why should I not take him to the night so? He shook her gently and called, Shanta, Shanta. Shanta kicked her legs and cried, irritated at being disturbed. Mother whispered, don't wake her, and padded her back to sleep. Venkat Roa watched the child for a moment. I don't know if it is going to be possible for me to take her out at all. You see, they're giving me an increment, he wailed. And that is the end of 45 a month in Malgoody Days. Bye, and see you next time at Detalks.